Alright guys, um, wanted to make a video real quick to uh, uh, go over some of the um, assassination attempts that I have survived over the past year. There's been a few of them. Actually, I just made a whole video that was probably 20 minutes long. And I barely even got into the assassination attempts and I started going into uh, a whole bunch of other shit. Which probably I should have. Should have had that video, but I just lost. I ran out of space on my uh, on my <clears throat> on my hard drive. So anyway, I just had to get really drunk to make that, and uh, then and then after all that shit, I had to get way drunker. So I'm pretty fucking drunk. So anyways. Uh, and I'm also pissed off because I cannot remember what the fuck it was I was thinking. Which, I had to get drunk just to make the video in the first place because I just couldn't bring myself to make it. And probably need to be getting drunk before I make videos anyways because it's just, it's just nerve-wracking for me. And uh, I just feel like I need to at this point. But <clears throat> anyways, <clears throat> you probably heard the song Bitter Pill. Or maybe have if you've been following me uh, by Acacia Strain, you're wondering. Let me turn this volume down for you. And you're wondering, um, <clears throat> what is that song about? What is it talking about? Hiding and stuff like that. Really, the song is just their way of insulting me because, because instead of instead of uh, waiting for people with a gun and just killing them, I went and hid, but the thing about it was is that there was a long story building up to that, which they're aware of, and they just wanted to screw with me. And the fact that I was crying at one point, which I was actually crying, and the reason why I was crying was because, because uh, I was looking at five assassination attempts. Excuse me, I know this is hard for your stomach. Just close your eyes for a second, because I'm gonna have to screw with something. Do not look at the screen, you will get seasick. I get seasick. Fuck. So, but the point of the story is that, uh, I could see these assassination attempts coming. I could see a whole, a whole bunch of shit coming. <clears throat> and, uh, my neighbor's a cop, so I know they're sitting over there probably stalking me half the time. But anyways, uh, I knew that there was uh, a lot of assassination attempts coming, and plus I had already just survived what I thought was a, was an assassination attempt, which <clears throat> it came after they put up that, that song, Sensory Deprivation. You know what? I could see somebody coming out here trying to kill me because I was making no music, and these motherfuckers are making really good music, and just assuming at some point that I'm going to try to kill these people because... They do nothing but insult me and create music about me. <laughs> and they're just really good musicians. And so <clears throat> somebody who really wants to hear their music and, and, and loves their music, you know, I could see them trying to kill me because uh, they don't want the music to go away. Well, here's the deal. In my opinion, Acacia String never made decent music, really great music anyways, before I became the subject matter. And the reason why, and I know it sounds arrogant, but the reason why is because uh, I spend a lot of time listening to music. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Hold on one second, actually. Before I can even sit here and go into all this shit. Uh, but, uh, excuse me. Did you get a haircut? I've been sitting around here for too long. Uh, but I'm a little bit cold. But yeah, uh, these motherfuckers spend a lot of time and they say they're wolves in sheep's clothing. I don't know what the fuck is going on. At this point, I really, I don't care. And I can afford not to care because I just, I figured out how not to get killed and probably not gonna get killed. Uh, now, 
I will go through the assassination attempts for you really fast. Okay, first night, I was sitting in here and I was just like, man, something is coming for me. I had my gun on me. I was just sitting here like, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. But I started praying. I was like, God, just give me an answer. I don't know what's going on. But I know something bad is coming for me. I, my palms are sweating. Something fucked up is going on. And something like a calm voice in my head came and said, Tanner, just go out back and sit by the creek. I was like, Jesus, that sounds fucked up. Now I know something fucked up is going on. <laughs> and so I get back there. I start tripping out. And I get back there. Start hearing voices and shit. I get back there. And all of a sudden I hear this window break from pressure. It sounded like, it sounded like a crowbar had broke a window open. And so I sat there and I said, all right, I'm sitting in the back, I hear the crowbar break open. I hear my dog bark, which is trained not to bark. And then in my mind I heard people running around in my house, but I, Honestly, I couldn't tell if it was real or not. At that point, I'm pretty sure it would, probably was just my imagination. Uh, and um, it just sounded like I heard voices saying, Where is this guy? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? When I got back up to the house, everything was pretty much the way it was when I left. So probably nothing happened. But, uh, you know, I had the intuition to sit back there. Well, basically at that point, I had a mental breakdown. The reason I had a mental breakdown was because... The acacia strain has done nothing but harass my life to the point where I have completely lost my fucking mind. And they sat there and made music about how they're stalking me. They sat there and made music about how they're stalking my girlfriend. And they made a video where they had polar bears that were all covered in blood. And they were going, grab your girl. And that's the point in the song where they say, grab your girl. They show polar bears running around with blood all over them. I was in the middle of getting over this bitch, and I mean, I'm serious. I really have had a lot of feelings for her for a long time, but I went to prison. You call it prison. I went to jail for a year. I spent 10 months in there, and when I got out, I went through programs for about another three months, two, three, two or three months, I don't even know, and then I went through probation. I was fucked in the head. And I ended up going to see a psychiatrist to, to hypnotize me into thinking I didn't even love her anymore. And then we went through a whole debacle after that, and it was a big problem. All right, so here's a story. Uh, they know that I was having dreams about her. They made music about how I was having dreams about her. And in my dreams, I would see her, but when I would wake up, I couldn't feel anything. And there was just music made about it, and there was music just... As I've gotten more and more understanding in, in what the what is going on in, 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 in you know, nonfiction writing and, um, you know, reading stuff and watching videos. And I've just come up on these people's radar. And it's gotten crazy and, oh God, yeah. It's gotten to the point where these motherfuckers have come up with the weirdest shit. And so, Anyways, that was just the beginning assassination tip. I, I really need to get back into into that. The second assassination tip came on. Uh, I was sitting here on. Um, no. So basically, what I did was, I threatened a bunch of people who were in the in gangs and stuff like that, because I knew that they would take me seriously if I threatened them. Because there's some kind of rule where if you treat people like shit when you're in a situation like this, then you kind of get them into it. Whereas if you just sit there and puss out afterwards, then you can get in a bunch of trouble. And that was my first instinct. So you should always trust your first instinct. And basically they released the song and, and the lyrics weren't out yet. And I, I felt like they were making lyrics where they said that they were going to send me a world of enemies where actually the lyrics said, um, the lyrics said that, um, lost in your world of enemies supposedly so i basically had that experience where somebody came out here and that song had only come out about two days before that and i said okay well 
I'm gonna have somebody break this dude's kneecap because I cannot be living in a lifestyle where somebody's trying to send people out here making music where they're telling people to come out here and hurt me and I have to run around and try not to get killed. And it got really complicated because you cannot just say shit like that to people out of nowhere and not expect a bunch of drama which I did end up getting into a bunch of it. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because there was music made to this effect years in advance of this ever happening. And, um, you know, a couple of years. And, and so, it, it could easily be something that was easily seen coming. And so, you never know, but, um, at the same time, I just want to say that it's definitely something that could have easily been seen coming. And um, the dudes turned on me, so I basically knew that they were going to turn on me because I was already driving up and down the road sweating because of what had happened already. And so I, I, I've already made videos on this and put them on Twitter, and that Twitter account got suspended. Every Twitter account I've ever made has gotten suspended. But anyways, uh, so I went, I went to uh, Oklahoma, which is funny because they made the song called North of Corpus, and it could have easily been uh, just assumed that I was going to be somewhere north of Corpus, but all this shit happened just like in the song, and that, that dude left the band, and you know what, when you start having prophecies and shit, People will come after you. People are learning this, you know, because they see what's going on with me and, and, and Acacia's train stuff, which I never had a really prophecy. I just was sitting next to this nick, to this black dude who probably, I was in jail, okay, I'm sorry. And this guy probably um, was just sitting there on the same page that he had been sitting on the day before and I thought I had a prophecy out of it. Which is why I really, it never really bothered me for a long time that the Acacia Strain was saying this shit about me because I just felt like they were helping me. And you can hear that in their lyrics because they're trying to capitalize on that angle. But, you know, the problem with them is that they're, they're just basically opportunists who will take advantage in, in anything that they can see as an opportunity. And then have come out in their lyrics and said we're wolves in sheep's, clo in clo sheep's clothing. They're sure of themselves. They're sure that they're going to get away with this. They're sure that you're going to buy into anything that they say. Because they're such opportunists. And that's the creepy thing about these guys. Is you can't ever just put a blind eye to them at all. You've got to keep thinking about what the fuck they're thinking about. Which has really turned my life upside down. And, and that's the whole point of it. And I get that that they're pissed off because of all the shit I put on the internet and I basically expected it. Anyways, the point of the story is is that at a certain point, probably they had already started deploying shit against me before I really cared to stop caring, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean going into like what my girlfriend is doing and like the fact that my girlfriend got strung out on pills while I was in jail and like the fact that our whole relationship deteriorated behind just probation and being on violation from probation and having people testing my piss and running my piss to a lab where they can tell exactly how much piss, how much THC and if the levels have gone up and all this sick shit that made me go nuts and ended up going to jail and, and giving up on my relationship and giving up on my business and some beautiful things in life that you should never give up on, like love and knowing somebody your whole life and giving a shit about them. And really caring and really caring about him and really loving him and all that which I honestly I cannot even feel anymore except when I'm asleep and you know the fact that they've known all this stuff and 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 that even relationships I think this whole thing about the coma which observers about a new relationship that really they saw coming a long time ago because I was running into acting agencies that were were interested in me I went into all this in the other video which got scrubbed which never did come but uh because i ran out of space but the acting agencies were interested in me they wanted me to go into acting they wanted me to go and this woman has done basically all her relationships have aligned with things that i was supposed to do in acting and all her roles are stuff that seems like she was probably interested in me you look at pictures of her 
you could tell that that's probably what was going on because it was a serious acting gig that I was looking at a real serious thing with a real serious and I had this dude who was this artist and he basically lied to me because I ran into him at a point in life where I was on Prozac and really nobody nobody could respect you after you get on Prozac because it's 94% fluoride this is actually I went through all this in the other video I forgot I thought I was going to forget all this but it's the chemical name is fluorexetine and it's actually 94% fluoride is designed by the Nazis in Nazi Germany to make you go to make you to make you go nuts and I was this kid who had all these women like when I would go into the locker room all the guys would be like hey Tanner all the girls are talking about you they're talking about what have you seen what he's wearing today have you seen how he smells and all this shit and that's who I was you know I had some problems going through puberty because of some crazy stuff that I feel like I witnessed growing up in places that I went I won't go into right now but you know um, I was just this person who was super concerned with his appearance all the time I'm not really like that anymore I would go to the fucking grocery store and just steal blackhead strips <laughs> I wasn't gonna let it happen and, and and you know the problem is is that is that I was just a different person and my whole concerns in life I was pressing my teeth in breaking pins over my teeth just to keep my teeth straight because I, I had already my teeth were going crazy from not using my retainer properly and really I had surgery and everything else you cannot fix what went wrong with my teeth after I let them go and I just quit hearing and the people who who lied to me they didn't respect me really and there's a good reason for it because I wasn't respectable I wasn't the same kid anymore I looked like a zombie I had all this like fat on my body I was pale I, it was just weird I was just a weird looking kid and and oh god that was after I got myself admitted into a boarding school because I told my dad I can't even be here anymore I didn't know what was going on with me because I went to a military school they put me on Prozac and I came back to all these same people who couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand me it was just a big fucking mess there was no there was no logic to it and to be honest with you you know I was lied to about what the potential was in my acting. There was actually women out there in major prominent acting roles who was probably building their whole life around me and probably still were interested in me and then basically they just compromised the whole situation with this whole notion of a coma witch. It's just a complicated story but the, the truth of the story is that I need to go into I need to go into the next point which is the I just put out a cigarette on a piece of plastic and this part stinking toxins in here but I want to go into the next point which is that I went from that I went to Oklahoma where I got where I got around my dad and there's this woman who he's married to now and they were still together at that point and and uh, and her father was the head central banker of Ecuador and in my opinion basically what happened was uh, this woman was just getting off on my fear the whole time I could just see it in her somehow felt like I could see it in her maybe maybe not but at that point she uh I heard her in there they took my gun up one night because I was on the phone trying to make sure that people were looking out for this woman who I had been in a relationship with before like I told you and I was just worried about her and I felt like I was having visions about her I was just hallucinating shit because of a uh, anyway relationship situation with this woman where I quit eating and then I became convinced that she was a coma witch which probably was just being love struck and she went through the same thing and you know she's made her her Instagram private or you could go through and see it yourself something like that probably happened or maybe she was coached by somebody into being quiet so then we'll have this hallucination with each other and go nuts like a coma witch and maybe something like that happened but either way the point of the story is that they've designed this shit to fuck with my head I know that the acacia strain and the point of the story is that I went to uh, there was that woman they took they that I was getting the phone with the cops my dad was like Tanner you're gonna make this woman go crazy with fear and listen to me I got a complicated life so 
I left my gun sitting on this thing. My dad came down, took my gun, and I walked past the bedroom, and I heard her telling my dad, just don't hurt him too much. And I was like, holy shit, they're going to kill me. And <laughs> I have no gun. But he's taking my gun. So, so I'm sitting there, and I heard my dad say, I'm going to shoot that nigger in the head. And he could have been talking about the dude who was trying to kill me, who I felt was trying to kill me. He could have been trying to put on a show for her. It sounds like if that was the case, that he probably wasn't talking about me. But either way, it's almost just like that song, Nor the Corpus, and he goes, I want to see that rabbit run. And uh, it's almost just like the song, man. And so either way, the point of the story is that um, there was... There was all that that happened, and, um, God damn. So my dad, God damn. I don't know, man. I don't even know what happened. You know, these people could have guns pointed at my dad. He could be in there going like, I'm going to shoot that nigger in the head just to sh put on a show for him. Because he knows that that's what they want at this point. You see what I'm saying? Or it could be a situation where, who knows? You know what I mean? But I'll tell you one thing, I really believe my dad isn't trying to just do something like this out of, man, I tell you, and one day I brought it up to him. I said, you know, this woman could be, could be, uh, I said just something about the look on her face when I mentioned having a gun. And I heard his voice in my head. He was sitting right next to me and he goes, get out of my presence. And I'm thinking in my head that my dad has this feeling about her so much that actually that there really are conspiratorial entities that are working within her that have brought her to him where now they have confronted him and said, listen, Tanner's a high level target. <clears throat> you're gonna do what we say and you're gonna marry this woman and, and, and it's gonna be nuts. And I kind of think that's what's going on. And, um, I've somewhat confronted the situation with her in, in the general area. She didn't seem too happy with it. Another thing about her is it seems like she always wants to be around me when this music comes out because she's like this Hispanic person who's really flippin' and, and, you know, arrogant. You know, I don't know if you know that about Hispanic people. When they're, like, aristocratic, they get such an air of narcissism that it just goes through the roof. And you can actually see it, like, when you watch Hispanic television and these women are like... And like their mouths are like, <laughs> and, and like they're just, it's in them to be like that, okay? I'm not trying to get too arrogant or narcissistic or racist on anybody, but it really is in them to be like that. And um, so the point of the story is that it just seems like these people have found their way into my company. And there's another dude who his family owns 20,000 acres. In uh, in South Texas, and his his he's halfway he's half Hispanic. I'm talking love it right on the border, and I'm pretty damn sure that these people are part of a uh, a drug smuggling route. And uh, honestly, I shouldn't be using the bathroom while I'm talking to you, but I just I guess my life is totally fucked up at this point. Here, look at this. Look at this. Right here, that's pretty cool. Paid like 150 bucks for that thing. Anyways, um, I can justify this by just saying I just need to look fucked up because I'm wrong like this. But either way, look, here's the point. Um, I'm pretty sure that this dude was planted in my life back when I was just talking about ending the drug war on MySpace. And, um, it could or could not be the case, but, you know, it just seems like this is how they act whenever music comes out about me and stuff like that. They always need to be around me and stuff, and uh, it seems like it runs in Hispanic, and this is Hispanic shit, or aristocracy. Uh, here's the point. Um, I know for one thing that... Um, that they were in there talking about killing me. And uh, it was right after they took up my gun and the cops showed up. 
And I said to the cops, I said, all right, listen, take me to jail right now because these motherfuckers are trying to kill my ass. And he goes, listen, we can't take you to jail because we don't have a reason. I said, just find a reason. And, um... Uh, And he goes, well, there's really nothing going on. And I go, I'm drunk. No, he goes, are you drunk? And I go, I'm drunk. And he goes, well, that's public dis disturbance or something. And I go, okay, look, that's good enough. Take me the fuck out of here because these motherfuckers are trying to kill my fucking ass. And he goes, well, okay, so they take me down there. I start telling the nurses everything that's going on because it is going on and of course my adrenaline is rushing so hard that I cannot contain myself or think clearly enough not to tell these motherfuckers this shit and so I tell them everything and, and they get me to a psych ward and while I'm in the psych ward I start thinking that this woman who is supposedly the coma witch which I'm beginning to speculate as to whether or not that's even real and I say okay listen um uh, this this right here uh, and I start thinking I start going with what my mind tells me and I was trying to get on all the drugs I could just to bring myself down because I knew I was fucked up it was just like the song North of Corpus and I said uh, and I said I said okay take me uh, I said so I got on the phone and I called the dude who was I knew was going to end up trying to kill me which I already told you that. And and within a days, I mean, just a couple days, there was a Mexican dude up there with tattoos, and he just wouldn't, and, and like, he was just averse to me. Like, I walked up to him, and he was just, he would just, he would just turn his back to me and start walking away. I was like, oh, shit. Here on the back of my neck, started standing up. I was like, this is fucked up. This mother would even try to kill my ass. <clears throat> Chose pretty much right, and so I said, sat down with him, I was like, look, man, you gotta understand, they brought my family into this, which is true. You know, the old song, um, Ramirez, which is about my, is about my mom. I guess they're trying to call me Mexican or something by bringing the word up Ramirez because they talk about Mother Mary with the broken face is my mom, which she did have a, a broken nose right there from just being uh, Native American, which we're from Oklahoma and it ain't Mexican, which whatever. But, um, so, so they brought up that, and so, um, they brought up my mom, and then they brought up my girlfriend, talking about her being strung out on pills and stuff like I already told you, and then there was, um, I told him that, I said, look, man, I said, these motherfuckers, it's probably how I ended up, anyways, I said, these motherfuckers, I brought up my family, and I cannot, you know, just say that, I mean, I was basically like, can you not understand that I have serious problems right now because of that? And there was a little bit, he was like, you know, this is how he was talking, this is how he was acting, and, and he wouldn't say nothing, nothing to me. And one night I woke up, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, felt just a looming threat. And I went out into the hallway, and he was down at the end of the hallway telling the nurses that he couldn't find where his where the uh, bathroom was in his room. And that doesn't sound believable to me. I think he was down there, and he was going to come back to my room, which was situated right next to his, and he was going to kill me. And uh, so, anyways, I left. I left. I got out of there, and I got back to here, and I had nothing but a pellet gun, which I was tripping. And in, in my car, I saw this almost like a vision where the lights went out. And I was like, what the fuck did that mean? I just had this feeling like I knew my life depended on it. And then that night when they came out here for me, I just flipped off all the lights. It was about 3.30 in the morning. And I was listening to the song Nauseam by Heart of a Coward, which is kind of incidental, you might say. And... Uh, it was like, there will be no sleep tonight. And then, and then, incidentally, it felt really good 
uh, I was really feeling kind of like I was on on drugs or something in another world. And I was, and I said to the phone, I said, "Here they come! Here they come!" To whoever was probably hacking my phone at that hour, probably somebody in the government, which I've been made aware of some, somebody was on there. They've let me know that. And uh, and then I went. It was I was actually in this room, incidentally. And I looked at the phone, the phone was situated right there. And I said, here they come. And I went into the garage. And within, by the end of that song, I saw lights come on inside the house. And I saw them through the crack of that door. And they were here to kill me. Somebody was. They were here to say hello at that hour. And, uh, you know, it's funny because the song was a life worth living, a lesson learned, and uh, a life. And at one point, they have a question mark on a life worth living. It's almost like I left the phone sitting out here so that whoever was stalking my phone, which I, like I said, I know people stalk my phone, couldn't couldn't um, hear my hear my phone um, through the door. And the reason why is just because of that. But probably somebody who ever came in here looked at that phone and saw the lyrics of that song and went and listened to it and was like, okay, well, this person has learned his lesson and they've never come back again. Um, damn, just bit my tongue. You know, I don't know exactly all the details of what the fuck has gone down here. I heard a little rice burner outside. I don't know what it was, but I know that somebody came in here probably to kill me I did tell them look go into the house I told them where the key to the house was hidden they probably went and made a copy of it and left it there somebody did and I said go in the house take these drugs and and use them as uh, collateral to break this dude's kneecap and um, you know it was just a bunch of prescription drugs that I had gotten from the fucking um, <laughs> From the fucking time spent in, in the psych ward, but at the same time, um, somebody could have taken it seriously. You know what I mean? And um, I can't tell you exactly what went down, but I can tell you that I went through a series of incidents where people tried to take my life. Uh, and yes, I did do stupid things towards this person because at this point, I have no clue what the fuck he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. I'm, I mean, I've been made paranoid by this motherfucker. He's made songs where the only time they make a music video is to make some fucking crazy shit about, you know, there's people who want you dead. We know everything about you and your girlfriend. Um, you know, we rip people to shreds, whatever. I'm trying to make it as psycho as possible. And it's had an effect on me over time. For a long time, I was just in denial about this shit. I was like halfway in denial, you know? And, um, and I just, you know, it's just questionable, um, everything that has happened between us, um, it's been something that I can't figure out what the fuck it is, but I'm pretty damn sure that it doesn't have nothing to do with me being prominent. And it doesn't make any sense for this person to be fucking with me other than the fact that they see me as some kind of threat and they want to fuck with me because they see me as some kind of threat. Here's a couple of people that they've screwed with. John Davis is somebody he's called out after he went on the Alex Jones show telling him that he was nuts for being a, comp a conspiracy theorist, which Alex Jones is just a watered down thing, which is pretty hardcore compared to what you normally see. But at this point, which is changing, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, at the same time, this person called him out, who's made music, unbelievable music about you can't understand what's really going on behind the scenes and talking about people that want to grab up kids and take them out into the desert. Doesn't sound like the type of government that you think is good. Now, why would he be calling him out? Because he's gone down that road. Another thing, when you talk about... Um, the lead singer of Amir, you know? He made songs about the Bohemian Grove. It's just, Alex Jones was somebody who called out the Bohemian Grove. It's something about 
these little ceremonies that involve these Jews and these 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 inbred people and these interior families. And once they figure out what's going on and you're starting to look into that side of things, that's when these people show up. That's my theory and it's pretty good theory if you ask me because this is something that I started to investigate at this point. I started to investigate uh, was there um, you know ceremony uh, ceremonies taking place where you've got these people going to these ceremonies and they're looking at um, you know chants and you know mock sacrifices possibly real sacrifice where they've got the you know skeleton of a baby sitting in the fucking in, in this little thing and they're in their cremating this little baby and stuff and then what the fuck does this whole song Observer talking about where you hear a fucking a heart monitor go silent, you know? And the sound of a car crash. It probably has to do with this woman who's in Europe who supposedly probably has a, some kind of crush on me or something. And the whole thing that they don't want us to end up together because that could be a duo at some point against them if we were to ever end up in power. And, and that's such a far-fetched thing that they have probably already come up with. Oh God, it's just such a nightmare, man. And and you know, and and the whole thing that people in in Britain are afraid of car crashes because they killed Princess Diana with a car crash. You know what I mean? They killed her with a fake car crash. Yes, yeah, I've put stuff up here. Sorry, but I should go somewhere else. I'm here where it looks a little bit nicer. Just because of post traumatic stress and going through. Soviet brainwashing program that was, uh, they sent me actually to a Soviet brainwashing program for seven months. That was something that I didn't get into earlier, but you know, when I said basically prison, basically what I mean is they sent me to a Soviet brainwashing program for seven months. I think it might've been seven and a half. I can't remember, but I later found out it was a Soviet brainwashing program reading, um, this book called trading dark conspiracy by, uh, Jim Mars. And, um, it was this program in East Texas called uh, Substance Abuse Felony Punishment Facility. And it turns out all the little things that they do in this program is based on the um, it's based on the Soviet brainwashing program that I read about in that book. So I wanted you to see my eyes while I tell you this because they may shut that down and try to bury the evidence. But you can kind of tell when a person's lying to you when they're being honest. Uh, I wanted you to see my eyes while I told you that. Oh, hold on a second. Fix this. <sighs> Oh, man. Oh, hell. Or actually, I'm just this. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, but anyways, um, I feel like I basically have gotten into everything that I wanted to get into today. But basically, the song Bitter Pill is about how I supposedly went and hid and, and, and I was in fear and all this. Well, I basically was in fear, man. You know, I had, I had nothing but a fucking pellet gun and a flashlight. And the flashlight really wasn't nothing that would blind anybody. I got a flashlight now that'll blind you. And a real gun that holds a lot of bullets. And they're pretty serious caliber and they're hollow points. I just don't fuck around with it anymore. Plus that, if you don't use hollow points, it could penetrate walls. But anyways, the point of the story is that the hollow points will... I'm not really worried about the walls. I'm just... I just don't care anymore, man. I just do not care anymore. And at this point, you could say that you have had an effect on me. I mean, look at me, putting these glasses on and off. I'm a nervous wreck. I mean, you fucked with my life. This is what they're talking about. You've got yourself elbow deep. You won't win. You know, I will watch you implode. I will watch you. I will watch you. What do you say? I will watch you um, deteriorate or something. I mean, they've got this in their minds that they're going to, oh, that they're going to make this happen. And they're pretty much going to make it happen. Okay? I mean, I have fucked with power. You know what I mean? I fucked with it hard. And I'm almost proud of it. You know what I mean? I'm almost proud of it. I'm almost proud of having to sit here and die for it. So everybody can see me just die slow and just be happy that, um, that I'm going to die for this. And that I'm going to feel good about it and, and that I'm going to see it coming. Because 
how could I not see it coming? I mean, I've fucked with you real bad. I see it coming. Uh, I see the pain coming. I see the, I see the shock wave. I see the, the results. You know what I mean? I see the whole thing coming to pieces, and I see people crumbling and coming apart at the seams and and being destroyed by what I've done. And I feel good about it. I feel damn good about it. And I'm not gonna stop feeling good about it. Okay? Because that's what I do is I destroy people and I and then I take the end results with glee in my heart. That I will get to see you having your day, but only because I've destroyed you already. That was what I always thought. I said, I'm gonna I'm I said Man, this right here will be the, this will be the boom shaka laka 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 slam dunk that leaves these motherfuckers scrambling for shit to do against me that probably will fuck me. But I just won on these bastards and they can't take back the boom that I just left on them. The boom bitty boom 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 baby is going down. You cannot stand up to this. You have been destroyed from the inside and you will show me all of your little mechanisms before it's all over with. <laughs> you will show me every little avarice. You will show me every little form of destruction that your mind can conceive of. You will show me everything. And we will all get to watch while this, while this whole propaganda scheme comes to, to fruition. And everything just just blossoms in front of us and you run out of things to say man I mean seriously uh, uh, fear is the difference between progress and change how about fear is the difference between progress and neutrality or something of that effect or not change or just choose your words I've tried to even send this dude some emails where I just give him some ideas but it fucks up the whole tempo of the song and to be honest with you um, it's just clear that the only thing you can really come up with at the end of the day is just the fact that you want to see me killed. And we get that. We get that. Because the truth of the matter is that I'm just a little demon out here on you. And that you can't understand what it is that I'm thinking and you can't understand what it is that I'm coming up with next and you're just, you're just tripping out there. You know what I mean? And that's part of the reason why I keep putting these glasses on is so you can be guessing about what the fuck it is that I'm thinking next. Because you'll never know, man. We'll always be thinking about you. We'll always be thinking about you.